All right, time to answer some questions. Yeah, we're going to talk to the people. We're going to talk to the people. I love I love the accent there. That was wonderful. I'm Justin. I'm JP. And we are the Podcasting Dead. Uh, if you are listening to this, odds are you know what this podcast is, and it needs very little introduction. But if you are new to the channel, consider subscribing and giving us a like, because it helps us out a ton, and we podcast about a lot of different things. This particular podcast is where we are answering Listener questions, which is always one of our favorite things to do. Stay tuned after the podcast. We'll give you Patreon and social media info. But as for right now, JP, uh, what you got for us in terms of questions? Uh, let's see the first one, and uh, you'll have to forgive me if I'm a little raspy this morning. Yeah, my voice is kind of, I got like a frog in my throat, too. It's, it's yeah. odd. But <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kim Younger, uh, dear, dear Kim. Uh, if you could make a rule for one day and everyone had to follow it, what would it be? Uh, it be? You this have to. It's some like Bruce Almighty kind of stuff. She said for one day. For one day, everyone has to follow this rule. So what are what are you motivated by? You're trying to improve society. You're looking for self. Definitely trying to improve society. Okay, like I'm a, looking for self benefit. I knew that. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, if it's self benefit, one rule is you have to you have to give me. Money. Mm, uh, you have to give me all the, all the money you spend in one day. You have to also give me that amount. But I wouldn't be going for that. I'm just trying to help JP out here. I would go. I mean, it's, it's corny. I hate being the nice guy, man. I'm gonna start being a straight up asshole just to improve my online character here. Oh but I mean, I would. I would honestly just like one day of no complaining. You just you can't complain one day. And I mean, I complain. You complain. We all mm-hmm. complain when we're stressed out. But just well, you know what? Not complaining. I'm sorry. No criticizing, like no, just just be nice to people one day. Like be more positive. One day, just be nice to people. Instead okay. of okay. take the energy that you use to break all these people down, primarily because you're super unhappy with yourself, and just put that energy toward finding something good to say about them. Unless right. they're unless they're just a douchebag, in which case, well, screw them. They don't deserve your good vibes. But you know, I just feel like people are just so much quicker to find something wrong with someone than to find something good. Like instead of looking at that person and thinking. You know, what an idiot, blah, blah, blah. Find something you like about him right. and then move on. But after that, after today, I'm going to become a butthole. I am too, my online presence, I'm too, it's, it's, I, it's too, nice guys create boring answers. Well, so. you, you got to be yourself. That's all. Just be yourself. Um, I think mine would be if you're in a red car and you pull up to a red light, you have to get topless. T O P L E S S topless. No matter who you are, man, woman, whatever, you pull up to a red but, light and you're in a red car. You got to get topless. Well, being you get to make the rule. Why don't you just say any female that pulls up to a to a red light? Because I mean, Not around a, here, I don't know that I've seen too many red car driving women. You know, oh, the the, the most beautiful ones generally uh, drive red red cars. It's a, okay. it's a scientific study I performed many years ago. I would just take that step one, take that one step further and just say at a stoplight, you have to, you know. Oh no, that would cause pandemonium. <laughs> that it would. People be wrecking yeah. like, yeah, you're right. Maybe just limited to red cars. T-O-P-L-E-S-S, I can see. L E S S. I can see the danger there. Mm-hmm. So that's my one rule. Uh, we got a good one from Brian Akeem. You ready for Brian? Yes, I am. All right. Do you guys see The Walking Dead going past the source material? It didn't work so well f- uh, with Game of Thrones, and the few original actors who are left have got to be tired as more actors are leaving the show. Well, it didn't work with Game of Thrones because they were just ready to get rid of that show and go to Star Wars. Yeah, that had to do with the uh, with the D and D brothers or whatever they're called. I mean, they kind of went. I mean, they definitely were going off the source material this season, but they kind they kind of added their own stuff to it. I I, I I'm hopeful with um with the, with Angela Kang and and just kind of this fresh look they have at it that they could go beyond the source material yeah the, and the walking dead's never been married to the source material. No. it's more just been a rough outline and uh, this is just a world where you can bring in new characters and that uh that spinning wheel can keep turning so oh, yeah absolutely yeah i, I think, think that they'd be okay yeah man i think as long as there's a good captain at the ship running the show i think all will be well as long as you keep scott pimple from you know, which I know technically he's Angela King's boss, I do believe. But, you know, they've kind of, he, she gets to call more of the shots, kind of her show. But yeah, he must have finally loosened up on it. I hope. Who knows? All right. Heidi L. Heidi L. Heidi, how you doing? 
uh, she can't answer me. Hi, Heidi. If uh, if you could go back in time and play any movie role in history, which one and why? My Titanic obsession is the reason why I'm choosing Rose from Titanic. Yeah. I wonder if she'd want to be young Rose or uh, old Rose. I'm, I'm imagining young Rose because since she got to have sex with Leonardo DiCaprio and she had many years. I, I doubt she would want it to be the old lady who... Did she die at the end of that movie? Let's clear the air on that. I know it's ambiguous and it's supposed to be, but like, what do you think? Did the old lady die at the end or was she just dreaming? It's been so long, man. I can't... Uh... I, I can't remember. I, I did recently see like an alternate ending where they try to stop her from dropping that diamond mm-hmm. necklace in the ocean. I'd never, I didn't know that existed. But. I know that James Cameron told her not to breathe during the scene where she's sleeping and they were, mm-hmm. you know, but that could have, that, 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 I don't know. I, I mean, it could be just because they, you know, she hadn't thought about it in so long or talked about it in so long that talking about it, you know, just caused her to have a dream about it. Or it could be that she just happened to die right after giving her story and, and go back to Titanic heaven and, you know, be I mean, back she with... She did go to the Titanic, didn't she? Well, yeah, right. Either in I a dream or now. or it was like an afterlife thing. Man. I'm wondering, though. I just, I don't know. Somebody clear that up for me. I mean, did she die or did she... If she died, that was real convenient. You know what I mean? That she made it all the way out to that ship and gave her story and then she died. You think it was suicide? Mm, maybe. Maybe. That, that Maybe pretty, she uh, was kind of like Miss Melisandre. Maybe that you know that that big jewel okay. throwing it into the ocean. You know her life force just ended after you know and think it was blue. Maybe so, man. Maybe so. I don't. And know. Melisandre was red, so maybe she was. I mean, maybe there's some Game of Thrones <laughs> Titanic tie-in there. Just up to uh, up to the viewers' uh, interpretation, I suppose. But yeah, viewers, what do you think? Did Rose die at the end of that, or did she just you know was she just dreaming? Um, but what would you pick? Uh, well, Heidi, if you're going to be Rose, I'll be Jack, and I will meet you in that car uh, up under the Titanic, and we'll get real steamy. Just to up the creep factor. Yeah. Well, that, Let's get naked in the Titanic. That you did. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Hmm. What movie role? I would love to go back in time and play Doc Holliday in uh, Tombstone. Oh, yeah, man. Love, that's Just one of the great of roles of uh, cinema yep. history. My friend and I have quoted that movie so much, I, am, I have full confidence that I could play. Doc Holiday. I'm telling you, man, Val Val Kilmer just killed it, and then uh, Batman killed him. His career was just <laughs> never recovered from Batman Forever. I remember. And I didn't. I didn't hate Batman Forever as much as I hated Batman and Robin. Yeah, it. Uh, yeah. I mean, I didn't think it was amazing, but I, I liked it. I mean, but I was a kid too. I right, right, went same back and watched here. it as an adult. Yeah, they they recently released like all the the uh, Batman movies back in theaters. Like you know, one Sunday you'd get one and yada yada yada. But I didn't make it down there to see any of them. Which one was it that had the Bat credit card? I think that was Batman and Robin. That's where it started. That's where it just got so off the it rails. It got so it camp, was, too campy. Yeah, it's like they were trying to channel like Adam West, you know, and all like that stuff. Bat nipples and. Yeah, which believe it, I, I didn't realize it till a while back, but Val Kilmer's suit had bat nipples mm-hmm. too. Just they not just as didn't, pronounced. right? They just didn't focus on them quite yeah, as much as yeah. they did with uh, George Clooney's Batman. Joel Shoemaker, man, what a what a kinky cat! Mm, I'm telling you. Now, Michael Keaton's didn't have any nipples, right? No, not to my knowledge. Mm. I was like, I watched the scene where Catwoman like licks, and you know, Michelle Fi- uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, that's her name, right? Like licks his mouth or whatever as Catwoman. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, man, Batman Forever. I mean, I mean, Batman Returns is still my favorite Bat movie. Yeah, absolutely. Time. But it's like, you know, I was telling somebody, I was like, how much you want to bet that latex suit was was keeping his boys back? You know, when during that scene, because there's yeah. no way that didn't just, you know, you think get banged, some excitement going in his Bat Cave? You know, you think they banged off screen? I mean, they, they could have. I would have. Whew. Michael Keaton is a tasty dish, man. I couldn't. Have. I'm still not 100. percent sh- I still kind of part of me thinks that that uh, Stephen Yun and uh, Lauren, Lauren Cohen, Cohen have banged yeah. off, st- off, off. I mean, I know that he's married to another woman and yada yada yada, but part of me thinks that they've they've shacked up. They're just. I mean, I understand. You know, guys and girls can be friends with no sex between the two of them but they're just a little closer than most guys you know what i'm saying like there's you can see there's some chemistry there like there's been something yeah you can if they haven't had sex they're definitely absolutely crazy about each other and like truly do want to be together but anyway but yeah so i'm doc holiday for me there you go all right uh jeep jeep always got a good one it took me two tries to listen to this a thunderstorm knocked out the power the first time I saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood this past week and loved it. Same here, Jeep Jeep. 
My sons didn't like it as much as I did, but I think it's because they are too young to get the references. I also loved how Tarantino took a certain event from history and just completely changed it. And he kind of like Inglorious Bastard. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm with you, Jeep Jeep. I loved it. I hadn't seen it yet, but I'm sure I will love it. Uh, if I you, hope. You know, it's 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 one of those movies that's not for everybody, but you know. No, not like just like a same thing with Inglorious Bastards. I met way more people that I that absolutely hated that than liked it, but I freaking loved it. Mm -hmm. Like I left the theaters, you know. Yeah. Uh, If you could take anything from history and go back and change its ending, what would it be? Now we're getting into some paradoxical uh, territory. Would you even want to do that in the first place? I mean, are we talking about movies here, like historical movies? Are we talking about like historical events? I think she's just talking about uh, going back uh, into history, (laughs) Mm. killing Hitler, stuff like that. I wouldn't. uh, I wouldn't change anything in history. I just alter my own personal timeline. But that could alter everything else. The butterfly effect, man. Like you altering your timeline could. You just you don't know the ramifications of what could happen. You can go back and maybe. Make your mom rich or something, and then like you come back and you've got a ton of money. But uh, you know, just through something as simple as giving her winning lottery numbers, who knows that we could be at war with Britain or something? You know what I mean? Like it's just crazy how every little thing has a chain reaction that can lead to something, even though it's so small, something so big. Yeah, but uh, there, there's still some uh, some stuff I would definitely go back and and change. But anyway. I don't know. I don't think I would want to change now as far as. Uh, as far as movies, I'm sure there are lots of, lots of them that I would love to change the ending on. Of course, I can't think of any right now. Yeah, of course not. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm sure there are a lot there. Um, I'm trying to think. Terrible. What are some terrible movie endings? Hmm, I don't know. There's a, there's a few times where I would go back to a uh, to a night of indulgence and not drink so much. So I'd have a uh, better sexual performance, but yeah, I would, uh, I would, I would definitely change the ending to my last two or three new year's eves, you know, new years, because I've, uh, I've, I've overdone it. I'm usually one that can, you know, I'll stay up and be good to go. Might catch a little buzz, but overall, you know, I'm okay. But new year's Eve, boy, I just, that's what new year's is all about. So hmm. um, I would go back and if you haven't seen the mist by now, I'm sorry. It movies came out what like 2006 7 uh i would go back and tell uh thomas jane to not murder andrea dale and his son Hmm. because you know andrea and dale were in that yeah yeah i've 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 seen bits and pieces of that it's actually a good movie but i would just go back in time and be like don't kill him the military's right there speaking of thomas jane man i would give him like another uh, punisher movie i I liked his Punisher. i did too man i I caught a lot of flack but yeah drew a lot of uh, inspiration from garth ennis's run on punisher i could yeah yeah Yeah, and had kevin nash i liked it you know it was a little goofy at times but i liked it Mm. all right well thank you jeep jeep we love you and uh stay cool down there uh, Alex Jimenez, we love oh, Alex. Oh, wait, before we go to Alex, and we do love Alex. Um, um, Jeep Jeep, I asked you in the comments, and you said, but so let's talk here for a second. Myrtle Beach, I'm coming down the, I think I'm coming down, the. it's the first week of October. Mm-hmm. So, you know, my girlfriend and I were talking, and like, I've been to the beach, you know, I've been in the middle of the summer, and I've also been November, December. And by November, December, I already know it's going to be, you know, you just pack jeans, short sleeve shirts, and a couple of hoodies in case it gets cold. Mm-hmm. But so first week of October, my girlfriend's like, so what do we, t- I mean, like, is that still tank top weather? Is that still short sleeve shorts? Like, give me the rundown. What what do I need to pack in my suitcase? Because my girlfriend and I are both like, I don't think we've ever been to Myrtle Beach and stayed for an extended time in October. Like, the, you know, the first week of October. Hmm. If I go in the fall, it's usually already cold. So, Jeep Jeep, let me know in the comments. What yeah. do I need to throw in my back? You know, what am I looking for weather-wise? Yeah, holla back, Jeep Jeep. All right, Alex Jimenez. Hey, guys. I'm really looking forward to the rise of Skywalker this year, but I feel that Disney has been failing to advertise it. Are you guys planning on watching it, and what are your expectations and hopes? My hope is that it gives the saga a great conclusion and lives up to Episodes 7 and 8. Yes, I will absolutely be going to see that. I went with JP to see the last one in theaters. Yeah, we sure did. I, it was my second time around seeing it. Mm-hmm. and Of uh, course, I can't ever have his first time. No, no. Well, except for a... Uh, You're such a fucking whore. What did we... Excuse do? my language. God, that kind of <laughs> slipped out. 
Um, we, yeah, but we you, slipped away and saw something on a lunch break when it uh, premiered. Spider Man. Spider Man. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I yeah. did. I did take your. I did take your Spider Man Far From Home Virginia. Yeah, that's right. I was trying to remember. And I'm not giving it back. Well, you know. But uh, yeah, I'm. I mean, I'm hopeful. You know the. Uh, I've more or less enjoyed the uh, the new Star Wars movies. You know, I, don't let I, him lie. He loved the last one, and then down the road had some complaints. No, I guess well, after revisiting, you can. I mean, I've done that. I've watched stuff and loved it, but then revisiting, you find some things you have problems with. Well, like the uh, the my first viewing, I was considerably drunk, and it was just a great theater experience, and I was like way more into it. The second time around, it's it's easy not to you know like look at some uh some criticisms with it and not be like okay yeah like the spaceship's just kind of running out of gas when that's never been an issue in any other star wars movie and then this you know kind of just weird little plot thing where they're going and you know trying to do something with benicio del toro i i don't know there was some filler meat in there that i I wish i'd have been a little different but it was it was it was weird too um uh, with uh, like uh, with the way that they their space rules, like when mm-hmm. Carrie Fisher gets thrown into space along with those other people, you know, of course, like it kills them. You know, she survives because of the force or whatever. But you know, yeah. space kills people in Star Wars. And then, like uh, you know, at the beginning when that girl and her sister are, you know, they blow up that ship with all the bombs and everything. It's mm-hmm. like. It's like wide open, like the vacuum. There's like no nothing there to keep them from the vacuum of space, and it's just like as if they are like up in the air on. Earth. Are you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, the ship's you. real I, open. I, I don't exactly recall that or that exact part. It's but. the beginning where they have you know her sister dies. The, sorry if you hadn't seen that yet. It's been out for like two three years. Get with the program. But it's the the you know they're they're fighting and it's the ship with all the bombs are going to drop, mm-hmm. but something gets stuck and it won't drop the bomb, so she blows the ship up. You know what I'm talking about? It was the girl that ended up being, you know, one yeah, of the... Yeah, I, th- I think I remember that, but... Good God, you saw it more than I did. How do you not I remember saw, that? I saw it twice. Um, one, Only once sober, though, but... My uh, unpopular opinion, man, my favorite new Star Wars movie so far has been Rogue One. Me too. Yeah. I, it's not I unpopular it. with me. I thought Rogue One was awesome, and I had a lot of people tell me they thought it was awful. I'm like, I think it's one of the funnest... You know, yeah. Well, I, I hate people like their their big complaint is, oh, it's totally unnecessary. Like we didn't know what happened, you know. And I'm just like, that's like saying it's unnecessary to ever have a World War II movie because you know, well, you know, Hitler loses in the end. Right. You know, I mean, get out of here with that. No, I thought Rogue One was great. Oh, I've yeah, watched man. that several times. Like, and you know, I like the uh, the Solo movie. I, and, you know, I mean, it was it was long, maybe a little long, but you know that I haven't seen. I yet. thought it was a, it was pretty solid. You know, was Amelia Clark good in it? Yeah, yeah, she was. So, yeah, but no, we will, uh, we will definitely be seeing that, Alex, the uh, the new Star Wars when it comes out. And you know, I haven't seen a ton of publicity for it, so nope. maybe Disney is dropping the ball in that respect. When does is that come out around Christmas? I don't even know. Mm. I'm not sure, but we will, uh, we'll keep you up to date on a, uh, you know, some Star Wars news. Maybe I don't know. Uh, Brand McCann has some rapid fires for us. Are you ready? December 20th, 2019. Yeah, I, I thought it was going to be around Christmas. Good Lord, man. Yeah, you really haven't been seeing any kind of hype over it. No, not too much. Not too much. I mean, that one trailer's dropped, and it, it did look good, you know, so I got hopes. I got hopes. Uh, hey, guys. Hope you both have a great weekend. Without further ado, here are some mail call questions for your entertainment. I told you it'd be a cold day in hell before mail call goes anywhere. All right. You had an Andy Bernard sound. How do you wait? A minute, do it again without further ado. Without further ado, <laughs> it's got like that. Mm. All right, are you ready? Yeah, go for it. Who is most likely to invent something new that is useful to society? Me oh, or you? Depends on what kind of useful. I mean, if it's sexually pleasing, obviously JP. Yeah, but judging yeah. from our make a rule question, if it's something that is, uh, you know, in, impacts mankind in a very positive way that's not sexual probably me yeah i don't like i mean i I don't see myself ever being able to invent something i could maybe come up with a good idea that someone else could use you know to inspire an invention but yeah it would be self-gratifying though if if it was an invention of mine you know without a doubt something that stimulates anyway it'd be a lot of stimulation all right uh who is most likely to get into a fist fight jp or justin me or you fist fight I, uh, I, I, if I was really drunk, uh, maybe the odds would shift a little bit, but I don't know. Uh, I, I don't want to get hit. I don't want to get punched. I feel like it would definitely be me. Yeah. I've got, I've got the worst temper of the two. 
Yeah. Well, I said unless I'm uh, unless I'm drunk and just not giving a hoot about anything. And even when I get when I've gotten into like drunken brawls, man, I really want to get beat up more than I want to fight. Like I'm very like what's the word like masochistic or something. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So I don't know. I um. I don't know, man. I mean, I, <laughs> I'm the opposite. When I'm drunk, I'm less. It's like when I'm when I'm impaired, I know that I can't throw down mm-hmm. because I'm so impaired. So that's when I am more likely to avoid a fight. Avoid I mean, I'm not it, yeah. saying I haven't gotten intoxicated and you know been a little quicker to be like, what the f- did you say? Right. You know, but I mean, odds are most of the time, um, you know, I will. Um, but I, but I, yeah, I've just got. To, I try not. At our age, I try not to fight. Mm-hmm. Period. But I yeah. mean, you know. I, I got to. I'll do what I got to do. All right. Who would die first in a zombie apocalypse, JP or Justin? We already know the answer to this. Justin would die trying to save JP because JP would screw me over to save himself. Yeah. I mean, I might would straight up Otis you, you know, like Shane, just like shoot you in the leg. And uh, even if the zombies weren't even uh, moving that fast and I, we both had plenty of time to get away. I think that'd be the only way JP would outlive me is if JP if JP was to betray me. Now, if I was to completely go away and not mess with JP at all during the zombie apocalypse and have my own little group, I think I would have a pretty fair shake at out surviving JP. I mean, but the fact that JP has openly admitted if I he thinks he would outlive me because I would try to save him or somebody else and then he would kill me in order to help himself get away. You know, it just depends on if we're together or not. Yeah, and I'd do it out of love. I would do it. You out wouldn't of do love. not. You don't. You don't experience love. I would do it uh, for your own good. So there you go. If I'm with JP, JP will probably outlast me because I just can't not save him, and then he'll kill me to get himself out of there. However, if I'm not with JP, I'm not being an ass, but I'm pretty confident I'll survive just at least a little bit longer. But so it just depends. This uh, this next one, I'm a, uh, I, I, I'm not sure how to answer it. Who is most likely not to shower for a week? I don't think I've ever gone that long without showering. I don't think either one to. of us like to. I mean, I'm a, I'm a daily shower. Yeah, as am I. And I'm, I'm a hairy dude, too. So you start getting sweaty and greasy, man. That stuff clings to you. I'll say more. probably me just because I like, I mean, I've never backpacked for a week, but mm-hmm. because I, I don't mind, you know, I mean, I, I, li- I'm, I like to shower once a day, but at the same time, if I'm backpacking or I'm camping or whatever, I mean, I don't mind going a few days without a shower if I have to. So um, probably me just due to circumstance, like maybe if I did get an opportunity to go off backpacking for a week. But right. even then, a week, man, unless it's cold outside, I'm going to find a stream or something to get in. Yeah, there you go. Uh, who is most likely to give their money to charity, JP or Justin? Hmm. I don't wanna, I don't trust a lot of charities. I'm not going to lie. I See, mean, I don't either. It depends on the charity. I've given to charities, and I love giving to charities, but I have to know like what I, I – I'm more like give it to the person themselves than I am give it to the charity. I'm not really about giving money to anybody, quite frankly. I've got to know them, man. I mean, I don't, I don't mind giving it to people that need it, but, you know, I'm not – like I'm one of those people when somebody – when I walk into like, you know, a, a gas station and somebody's like, hey, man, can I get some money to – to get some food, mm-hmm. you know, I'll just say, well, what do you want to eat? You know, and then, and that a lot of times weeds the crackheads out because you say, yeah. well, what do you, what do you want? Just give me the money and I'll get it. Well, no, man, I'm going to get something to eat. What do you want? I literally have had to someone say, man, fuck you then. Fuck yeah. you. And I'm like, okay, I just tried, oh, I'm talking about who's going to get in a fight first. I'm like, mm, kick that. Makes me so mad. But yeah, I've had that happen several times where you just try to flip it on them. Like they go, you know. Can you spare some change? I'm hungry. Yeah, man. What do you want to eat? I'll buy it for you when I go get my food. Well, just, just give me the money. I'm not hungry right now, but yeah. I'll get it. No, well, no, man. I'm going to buy you some food now. What do you want? You want a sandwich? You want a hot dog? Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, man. There was a, a panhandler when I went to Nashville. I was like 19, and he was just straight up. He was like, man, I ain't even going to uh, uh, bullshit you. I ain't going to do nothing. I want money for a beer. Can you help me out with a beer? And I was like, uh, man, I'm only 19. If you get a tall one for me too, we'll make it happen. And next thing you know, we both have a cold beer, and uh, it was a good it was a good night. I've had an experience similar to that. So the, appreciate the, the honesty. Yeah, and the homeless can come in handy, you know. <laughs> How I don't know. Well, exploiting them, yeah. Mm. Uh, do you remember bum fights? You remember that online sensation? I do. Yeah. I remember bum fights. Gosh. Gosh, what was it? It was one where it was like Bruce. You thought I was dead, didn't you? You some bitch. <laughs> God, I, there, there was one man where they just had like a bunch of like little crack rocks, like like 
bound up really tight and just sunk them to the bottom of a pool and just let them have at it, man. And they dove in there. It was crazy. I think the uh, the mayor of whatever city that maybe San Francisco or something like uh, shut that down. Oh yeah, there was a. Um, Which I'm the, sure it still happens. They just don't you know put it out there. Like, yeah, I about. remember that man. That's crazy. I used to see that on E Bombs World. Do you remember E Bombs World? Uh, it, it, the name rings a bell. I, I don't remember how much I watched. I remember the damn show and like Rackham Williams. E Bombs World was just a website kind of uh-huh. where all of the silly stuff was. Like right. you'd go to E Bombs World and you would see like a clip of bum fights or you'd mm-hmm. find like rackham willie or yeah but is that it yeah that's it that wow mail call so we didn't even have kim what was her name kim younger that normally gives us all the all the which brianne actually handled some of the rapid fires this time but we normally have uh yeah i was gonna say i think there was one in uh one of the other videos uh, well darn that was a short one but i will say hopefully you got to check out our skinwalker video and our um our donald trump time traveling video uh or video podcast wherever you're listening i keep sometimes have to remind myself we're not just on youtube anymore uh, I thought both of those were pretty good, and the response seems to generally be pretty good. So if you're into paranormal or conspiracy stuff, go check those out. The Skinwalker thing is pretty wild. Yeah, we're having fun with it. And uh, there, there's actually been people communicating with experiences with the, with these kind of creatures, yeah? Yeah, we've actually, our good friend Derek uh, Patterson was telling me that uh, he's got, he's actually been, he's, he lives near the Skinwalker Ranch property. Oh my god! And he's seen some stuff, and he's pretty big on Sasquatch. So we might actually—he gave me his number. We might actually phone in with him. That'd be awesome. And speaking of of of, did you ever get a package from Caitlin? No, I still haven't. I sure have. I thought maybe she sent something. And you were just hoarding it for yourself. Uh, just adding it to the shrine, man. I was like, dude, what the hell? Caitlin Howard <laughs> Shrine. Nah, she it hadn't arrived, or she hadn't sent it. I don't hmm. know. But, uh, yeah, go check those out. And I think the next one we're going to do is what? Maybe the Wendigo or what was it? Oh, maybe the Mothman. We had somebody request do the somebody requested we do the Mothman. So, yeah, it got pretty good feedback. So if you hadn't already, go check those out. Something different, Mm -hmm. you know. But I suppose that's I suppose it's going to wrap it up. JP, we should start preparing questions for each other (laughs) to wrap each podcast up with. Yeah, we could do it. Did we have any mail calls from any others? Um. Let me look um, at yeah, the previous mail call and see if there's anything we didn't answer. Yeah, I, I, I don't remember seeing anything off the top of my head, but mm-hmm. I haven't looked in a, a day or so. So. Yeah, I think that's... Uh, I think we got everything. Excuse me. All right, yeah. Sorry for the, the dead air. We're just trying to make sure that we've got... Um, all the mail calls answered because you know we're gonna sit here and be like, is that all? That's all. And then rest assured, yeah. <laughs> somebody's gonna be like, we, why didn't you answer my questions? We do miss them every now and then. <laughs> yeah, we didn't mean to, I promise. Let's see, was there one on the Fear of the Walking Dead review? Did anybody even watch Fear of the Walking Dead? Because let's see, what's the point of fear? Brianne says she's not even staying up to watch. No, Fear Brianne, the Walking Dead I can't anymore. blame you. Mm-mm. Just TiVo that sucker, and no, we won't. If we weren't podcasting about it, I would absolutely just watch it at some point during the week. Mm-hmm. Hell, I might just not watch it at all, and then go back and watch it. You know, binge it. Yeah, it has not been good. Uh, well, apologies for the boring, uh, <laughs> boring little lulls there, but I can't find any other questions. So if we missed anything, please leave it on this mail call, and we'll make sure to uh, answer it. In the meantime. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, and don't judge us on this podcast. I promise we have more interesting stuff out there. Um, but, uh, yeah, leave those questions. Uh, thank goodness for the ones we did have. But remember, if we don't, um, you know, if we keep having, you know, slow mail, we, we're not going to not answer your questions ever. I think one thing that JP and I both love is just how accessible we are to listeners and mm-hmm. vice versa. But, I mean, we might go to just – answering them after certain videos you know what i mean or something to that effect instead of making an entire podcast for it so make sure you ask those questions it can be walking dead or fear of the walking dead related it can be related to life uh it can be related to pretty much anything i don't really think much is off the table so ask those questions and make sure to check us out on patreon uh once you go to you just log on to patreon and search for the podcasting dead we should be the first thing that pops up and uh yeah make sure to follow us on social media jp where can they stalk you at 
Uh, what, what, uh, J underscore Ratsaw on Instagram, Snapchat, JP Slim on Periscope. I ain't using much of anything these days. I've kind of caved in on myself in a lot of respects and just not. You're like a dying star, just yeah, collapsing I'm not, in on I'm yourself. not putting much of anything out there right now, but, you know. Is everything okay? Uh, you know. Do you need another hug? Another uh, another day, another another dollar. Where, you I, mean, know, I know where, I gave you a hug yesterday, but I mean, if you need another one already, we're, uh, we're, I mean, we're, we're plugging along. You can you can turn in one of your vouchers chooka, and get another chooka, one. Chooka, choo, choo. Beautiful. Yeah, you nailed that. Mm-hmm. You made that your. You know what? But that yeah, that'll wrap it up for us. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and uh, Snapchat. Just I'm Justin Lloyd, all lowercase. Um, no apostrophes, no nothing. Two L's and Lloyd. I'm Justin Lloyd. It's Twitter, Snapchat, and Instagram. And we will see you on... Well, actually, tomorrow we're going to release the paranormal. Because, like, oh, yeah, there's yeah, two... Yeah. JP had a good point to not get confused. We have the paranormal... We're going to call it para, we won't call it paranormal podcast, but we're going to have the paranormal experiences podcast where we talk to people mm-hmm. about, you know, things they've seen or experienced. But then we're also going to be doing this new weekly, just to kind of test it out, see how it goes, this new weekly, like... Uh, paranormal discussions podcast like we did this week with the skinwalkers where we just give you some you know information on supposed supernatural beings and stuff so uh you know that tomorrow yeah you should be able to listen to the very first paranormal experiences it's me my it's myself aaron and jp yeah no. it was uh not not the best out of the whole series <laughs> but still a fun little well and we haven't found it only one person's given us something scary yeah. <laughs> you know i mean like we've been very thankful for the guests and uh we definitely still plan to get dan ashtown one of our listeners on there but everybody else's experience they've dealt with nice ghosts right. which is cool and i mean i want to hear about it regardless but i'm like i need somebody to scare the bejesus out of me right mm-hmm. now like tell me some horrifying stuff that's happened but yeah so be looking for that that'll come out uh tomorrow Otherwise, we will see you on Monday for Fear the Walking Dead. I'm Justin. And I'm JP. And we're the Podcasting Dead.